Hey everyone, Tim here from QBKing77.com. Here to do a video, a full review of the Signage Mod 10.1 ROM on your Sprint Samsung Epic 4G Touch. Gonna go ahead and go over it, go over some of the bugs. Today is January 24th, 2013, so that would be the latest. The latest build is 20 th from the 23rd as of right now, so uh, that's the build that I am on right now. Again, it could have updates in the very near future, so just kind of keep that in mind. But I have a video showing you how to install this ROM. I will link to it in the description of the video below. I highly recommend checking it out if you are looking to install this ROM. But anyways, let's go ahead and get into it. First of all, Signage Mod 10.1, made to emulate the AOSP Stock Jelly Bean experience, uh, just like the Nexus 4 or any other Galaxy Nexus, any other AOSP device. But you'll see five home screens that have a little bit of a transition animation when you move the screen. I don't know if you guys can notice that or not, but it's just a, just a slight transition animation. Go into our app drawer. Horizontal app drawer, like always, go straight into widgets as well. Got all our AOSP widgets, bookmarks, etc. We got a 4G widget. Uh, so that's very nice. I have been extremely impressed with the fluidity of this ROM and just how much it hasn't slowed down or lagged. I've been using it for a little while now. Anyways, I wanted to go ahead and start off with some bugs. First of all, dock audio does not work, so just kind of keep that in mind. Some people have had uh, spotty issues with GPS. Most people have reported that GPS has been working, but uh, some people have had issues, so just kind of keep that in mind if you wanted to try it out, test out GPS. Uh, but it is does seem to be working just fine for me, so it seems like GPS is working. But that's really about it. Um, you might run into some issues here and there, some small things, but overall everything's going to be working. WiMAX, 4G, text, data, calls, audio, uh, Wi-Fi, Google Now works. We can actually try that out now. I haven't set it up yet, so it, it'll go through the setup. But Bluetooth should work. Picture messaging should work. The camera works um, along with the camcorder. So I can, I can demonstrate those as well, uh, but just kind of wanted to show you Google Now, bring up some cards. Um, it's loading up my to my house, new version to the Play Store. I'll have to update that as well, so you'll have that. Uh, looks like the Bulls won and the Blackhawks won, so that's, uh, that's always good. So we can go ahead and ask something, or not. I don't know why that's not working. So it says Google search has stopped. I don't know if there's an update in the Play Store. I'm going to have to check that out. It should be working just fine. Oh, well, I'll do it after the video, but uh, Google Now should be working. At least voice search should be working. If you're having issues with voice search, you might want to check the ROM thread. If it's a continuous issue, I don't see. Uh, it might just have an update or whatnot. But anyways, let's get into some other stuff. First of all, pull down the notification bar. You will see expandable notifications, two fingers up and down. You can also use one finger to just pull it down. You can also use one finger to contract it. You just kind of press on it, go below it, and then bring it up. So that's kind of a little tip, uh, pro tip for you guys is bring it below and then go up. And it should you can use one finger for both, bringing it down and going up. So you don't have to bring out two fingers, especially if you're using your thumb. It's very convenient because you can just go like that without having to bring up another hand. You can clear notifications there. You also have a little icon up there. You press on it and it brings you to some uh, some settings, some toggles, which you can customize. So I'll get to that in a second, letting you know what your battery is at. Um, signal strength, airplane mode, brightness, and go into settings. So we can go into settings, scroll down, go to about phone. You'll see it very smooth going through these things. Um, Signage mod 10.1, uh, let's see, Android 4.2.1. So we are on the latest version of Jelly Bean. Go ahead and back out of the settings. I wanted to show you guys the lock screen. You'll see CRT screen off animation there. Uh, lock screen, pretty standard. Go anywhere for uh, unlocking. You can also swipe over to the left. You'll see I have uh, some emails there. You can add other widgets on the lock screen, such as Google Plus Post messages. So if you want a messaging there, it will show you a list of your messages. So let me go ahead and go back to that. You'll see I'm running a little bit low on battery, but we can swipe over and go into our, I don't have any messages, but you'll see my messaging application is there along with emails. You can swipe to the right. It will bring up the camera application. So if you want to take a quick picture with that, it does so there. You can swipe from the right, and then you can look at your, some of your pictures. You also see that the camera is still running on the left side, so you can quickly go back to it and then just take another quick picture. So that's actually really nice that you can do that. Anyways, some other things that you, some other options you'll see of panorama, video recording. It does not have Photosphere. I think there's an add-on for it. You'll have to check over at the ROM thread, but it does not come stock with it. 
Um, you can press anywhere on the screen and it brings up a list of settings. You can swipe down to exposure, uh, switch to the front facing camera if you guys wanted to check me out. <laughs> there you go. Uh, we can go back to our rear facing camera and then you have flash and white balance and just other settings. Uh, you can actually switch the location to your SD card, which is great. That was actually just added from internal uh, to external storage. So you'll see, I don't know why it has a bunch of USB, but SD card or internal storage, you have the option for that. Uh, other, a bunch of other various settings that uh, that is great with the camera application. So there's that. Also, uh, I wanted to make a quick note, a quick tip. When you use two fingers to pull down the notification bar, it does go quickly into those settings. But let's go back into those settings because Signage of Mod 10 Point one has some amazing settings, some launcher ones, nothing out of the ordinary drawer, dock, home screen, uh, lock screen settings that you have uh, specific security, battery status, you can maximize the widgets, you have some slider shortcuts, view and change them. So when you, uh, you'll see you have the option to customize a bunch of shortcuts. So if you wanted to add the messaging application, you can go up, you can go ahead and add an application and then it'll bring up a list of your apps and then you can go to the messaging application and hit OK. You can also go ahead and add another one. You can use activities, other things if you wanted to use maybe Google uh, Google Now, anything like that. You can customize it to your liking. Just make sure you just hit save and then the lock screen shortcut will be saved. So my messaging shortcut is there and there's that. So you have that option, slider shortcuts. That's one of the cool things I like about CM10. Um, otherwise, we have some theme options. I think you'll have to look up CM10.1 in the Play Store. I don't know why I just did that, but it's switching to the same theme that I was just on. Uh, and system settings. So some status bar settings, AM, PM style, battery, icon status style, percentage, circle, circle with percentage, and hidden. So those various standard settings for Signage Mod 10. Um, also some quick, the quick settings panel, which is actually this. So that is known as the quick settings panel here. We can customize that. Uh, quick pull down, you have right, left, and off. So what quick pull down does is, let's go ahead and say I selected right. When I pull down from the right half of the screen in the status bar, it's going to bring up those quick panel settings right away. If I go to from the left, it'll bring up my notifications. So that's just a neat thing. What you might want to do is select left if you're right-handed using it one-handed. Notifications, you just pull down from the right. If you wanted to go over to those quick panel settings, I think you can go, yeah, you just go from the left and there you have it. So that's a really, really neat feature. I like that a lot. I'm going to leave it on left. Uh, auto close the quick panel settings upon toggling if you wanted that. Uh, tiles and layout, you can customize them. So if you wanted settings to be, you just press and hold and drag and drop. So you just uh, drop them on there. If you wanted Wi-Fi to be up here as opposed to brightness, um, you can restore the default layout. You can add some. So let's say I wanted GPS on there. You'll see GPS got added. If I wanted to add another one, mobile data, sync, torch, let's say torch, add torch. So there we go. Now left side, pull it down, oops. If I pull down from the left side, you'll see if I want to turn the torch on. I don't know if this works or not, and it does. So that you'll see torch is working just fine down there, and that's it. So those are some other quick panel settings, screen timeout modes, and then just dynamic tiles there. Uh, very cool. So the quick settings panels in CM 10.1 is fantastic. I really like it. Notification drawer, if you wanted to add the power widgets, like standard CM10 with these, you can add them if you like. I don't see a need for them, but they did include them if you need them. Power menu, when you press and hold the power button, uh, screen you have a screenshot option, a sound panel, airplane mode, etc. Uh, clock widget, you can change, I don't know what the clock widget is. So you have clock and alarm, weather panel, and calendar events. I believe they included a, a different app. It's called uh, Chrono, Cronus, Cronus? I believe, I haven't checked it out myself, so I guess I can do that in just a second. Notification lights enabled and hardware keys. So those are just about all the CM10.1 settings you have advanced as well. Uh, some sensors, haptic feedback, storage, and dock. So those are some Galaxy S2 settings down there. And then I believe you should have performance settings. I don't see them. Um, I don't want to get too much into those if you have them. But you can go to About Phone, and you'll notice developer options wasn't there. So to turn that on, you go down to build number and quickly tap on it. I think it's seven times and it says you enable developer options and then there it is. So developer option and there's the performance settings. So then performance settings will show up. Proceed with caution if you'd like to mess with those. Again, I'm not going to get too much into those. 
Also, real quick, here's that Cronus widget that I was talking about. You got the date, you can set the, the weather, etc. You can go into it, you got alarm clock, you got a quick stopwatch, and a timer there. So, uh, they just kind of wanted to show you guys that widget. That's just about everything I wanted to show you. Standard AOSP dialer, going to the messaging application, you have the new latest keyboard. So you have the swipe technology there, and it's not called swipe, gesture typing. Uh, that you have it works well hey there how are you doing question mark and there you have it so uh, text messaging very cool keyboard as well uh, go to the browser i have my website loaded up if you haven't checked out my new site feel free to check it out now it's actually pretty cool kubiking 77com so there's that um, uh, browser i mean pinching in zooming everything uh, going in on images, it's, it scales very well. That's just a stock browser. Of course, I have uh, Chrome as well. I wanted to run a quick benchmark. I'm going to run Quadrant Standard because a lot of people said, hey, can you start running some benchmarks? So I'm just going to run a full benchmark. Actually, I'm going to cancel it because I want to do a full reboot first. Also, press and hold the home button, and you have a recent running apps list to quickly multitask. You can swipe away specific applications that you don't want there, or you can press this icon right here to get rid of all of them. So I got rid of all of them, but I'm going to do a quick reboot reboot so I'm gonna reboot my device I'll be right back all right phone just booted up got quadrant standard going I'm just gonna run a full benchmark now uh, I'm not gonna make you watch it maybe I'll let you check out some of the graphical features but that's just about it Planets is the one that I like to check out just because it seems to be the most graphic intensive. It's doing a very good job at it. All right, so proceed and it will actually let us know how we did on the benchmark. And there we have it. Our device is 2686. So there's our quadrant standard score. And then there you have it. So just figured I'd show you guys that. But that's just about everything I did want to show. Again, not sure why. Uh, voice search isn't working. I'll have to look into it. I'll see what I can do. But other than that, works great, runs great. Highly recommended ROM for the Epic 4G Touch. I know you guys have been waiting for me to do this video. So apologize for the delay, but that's the full review. Let me know what you think. Be sure to leave a comment. Be sure to subscribe to me as well. Follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. All links will be in the description of the video below. And as always, thanks for watching. Be sure to give this video a thumbs up.